get started. I'm Michelle Shaw, and we're going to have a conversation today about how to develop the mindset for learning. It is a conversation because I know you have many ideas about how we can develop this mindset together. And so I'm going to turn my cameras off, having said hello to you, and then we're going to have a conversation. Can everybody hear me? Give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Or yes, if you can hear me, perfect. Awesome. Fantastic. So I'm really excited about sharing with you because I've been in the classroom lecturing for a long time. And one of the things that I recognize over years and years of working with learners is that those with a good mindset, a positive, proactive mindset, always achieve better outcomes than those that don't possess this mindset. And that's notwithstanding level of capability, level of access to resources, the challenges they're having. People with that mindset, that proactive mindset, somehow find a way to succeed. And so as you embark upon this journey with us at George Brown College, I want to welcome you to what I call the best college, George Brown College, home for me and so many more of my colleagues and so many more students like you, because we work very hard to make sure you feel like you belong here and you feel supported here and you feel like you have the tools to succeed here and people who care about your success here. All right, so that's the premise under which we're doing these orientation sessions. My colleague Peter is moderating. He's, he's in with me, if you notice him. He's a master behind the scenes in organizing these sessions for us. So tell me before we begin, when, the, when you hear the word mindset, what comes to your mind? Message in the chat for me. What comes to mind when you hear mindset? What do you know about this? And while you're filling in those answers for me, I want to officially welcome you to George Brown College and to our base in the city of Toronto. And we're so anxious for you to be able to come and meet us in person if you're not already on campus uh, once COVID is over. So Amandeep says it's how you think. Larissa says it's a goal or a plan. Guilherme says it's programming our mind. Glory says one state of mind per time. Jamina, it's an assumption. It's all of those things, right? So what I'm going to do today is we're going to have a conversation, and this is what we're going to talk about. Three goals for today's session. We want to highlight the importance of your mindset in how we think and act. I want to challenge your habitual patterns of thinking and acting. And I want us to work together to shift to a growth mindset to support your learning this semester and beyond. Now, did you know that your mindset affects how well you will do in your program? Well, research suggests that learners with different mindsets can experience drastically different outcomes when faced with the same set of circumstances. So it's critical for you at the beginning of your learning journey now to choose the mindset that will support your learning optimally. So by the end of the session, I want to make sure that you know which mindset will affect your grades, will affect your career, will affect your life, and you understand how to evaluate your mindset and you understand how to interpret the mindset that you're using in the learning process. So let's work together. Before we get into it, though, I want to make sure you know what your own goals are for this session. We're going to come back to the definition in one minute. But first, what are your goals for today's session? Why did you register? What are you hoping to achieve? A critical component of mindset is to know why. Why are you here? You need a why for everything. Natalie says is to learn more and to understand. 
When you know why you're here, it will help you to get what you came here for. Kritika says, better understand it. And this way, when you do anything, you know why you're here. For instance, you're here on this workshop right now. What if there is something you wanted to know and I didn't cover it? The reason you're here will help you to be able to ask those questions when we come to the end of our presentation. Jamina, she wants to get some tips for building her GBC journey. Awesome. And, and Jamina, I'm sure that you already have seen our orientation schedule, so you know there are other workshops that will help to support that as well. And Marija or Mariha says to understand how I can adjust my mindset to be better prepared for my program. Very good. Mariha, is it Mariha or Marija? Please let me know how we pronounce your name properly. And then, welcome to the session, Mark. I'm going to ask us. Now that we know why we're here, you know what your goals are, you want a better understanding. The J is silent. Okay, Marie, Maria. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. And then I want us to do one activity before we get into it. And I want you to tell me, everybody knows the letter F. And in this activity, it doesn't matter the case, uppercase or lowercase, as long as it's an F. But what I'm going to ask you to do is to count the number of F's you see in the sentence that I'm showing next. When you count it, just hold your answer. Don't post it until I say post. And then when I say post, I want everybody to post their answers at the same time. All right, here's a sentence. All right, how many F's did you see? Uh, six, five, five, four, six, seven, six, four. Okay, so we have many different answers to, yeah, some have six, seven, four, five. Okay, so we have from four to seven F's, okay. So I have another question for you now. What did the sentence say? What did the sentence say? Oops, <laughs> oops, Jamina, Jamina says, oops. What did the sentence say? It's a good question, Camila says. Ha <laughs> ha, Mark has no idea. Did you catch any of it at all? No, don't know, don't know, no idea. Why, why, why? I told you I was gonna put up a sentence and I, I wanted you to count the Fs and you counted the Fs but you don't know what the sentence says. Uh -huh. We're just focused on the goal, focus on what you asked, count the apps, right? <laughs> About scientists research. <laughs> what does that teach us? What does that, what does that activity say? What, what is it? What is it? So the sentence, here it is. It says finished files are the result of years of scientific study combined with experience of many years. And there are exactly six, six Fs. So some people got six, some missed out a few, some saw an extra one. And I'm sure that the persons who got seven probably counted the Fs on the slide, not in the sentence. So tell me, so Mark says we should focus on the macros as well as the micros, brilliant. What happened in this experiment? What, what, what's, what's the learning, what is the learning? What is it that you've gathered from this? Already Camila says that we were focused on what we were asked, just count the Fs. We were focused on just that. What else did you learn from that activity? Lack of attention, says Kritika. What else did you learn? How did it come to be that we missed the entire sentence and only saw the Fs. How did that happen? Do you think we're on automatic? Yeah, goal orientation, we might miss the whole work. We, we might miss the whole work, right? Just going in and picking up the few pieces. And we wanna make sure that this has to be how we think about correcting our mindset when we enter the learning environment, right? Because we're on automatic, we're on autopilot. 
And I want you to think about how much are you leaving on the table so that as you enter the environment for learning, you don't shortchange yourself, that you recognize that there are ways that you're going in to the learning experience and simply picking out the Fs and leaving the whole sentence intact, not even recognizing that it was there. That's an error that you don't want to make in your learning. So I wanted to flag it up for you just before you begin. And this is a critical correction in what you're going to do going forward. I want you to soak up the experience. A learner does more than is instructed. A while ago, you did what I instructed you to do. You followed the instructions. You counted the Fs. A learner goes beyond that. A learner has their own goals. A learner makes notes. A learner reads. A learner surveys and scrutinizes and thinks about what is there. A learner explores, right? A learner certainly follows instructions precisely. Correct. Larissa says a learner thinks outside of the box. Yes. Correct. And the learner listen to the, listens to the instructions as well. So for instance, we're counting the Fs in the sentence, not on the slide. So even though that extra F is on the slide, it's not part of our sentence. These are strategies and skills that are important for cultivating this, that skill set that you need to optimize your learning experience. Right? The learner is focused on the process, not just the answer. I really want you to get that bit. Make sure we hear that. The learner is focused on the learning process. The learner is not here to give answers or to get answers. There is a process that the learner is fully immersed into. And that's really the key to this mindset. How is that so far? Feel like you got something that that's enough now we can um go into the learning experience fully ready got it one activity and we've got it but we're not done we're going to talk about what the mindset is it's your frame of reference you talked about it earlier it's how you think it's what you see how you see it how you feel about it how you act upon it and one analogy that we use is we compare the mindset to your operating system. So you have an, a, a device, you want to run a new program. Sometimes your device has an operating system that's capable of running that program. But sometimes when you go to run the program, it says, sorry, we can't run this program. You need to update or upgrade your operating system. And that's really what our mindset is. It's that operating system that allows us to run all of the learning programs that you're here to run. And so before you begin, it's a great idea to just stop and reflect on the mindset. Is your mindset the kind that when it sees the obstacles, it's going to go through? When it's tired of being online, it's still going to push through. When COVID has its ups and downs, you're still going to push through. That's what we want to make sure you have. So Dr. Dweck of Stanford University classifies two mindsets that we want to be aware of in the learning environment. One is a fixed mindset and one is a growth mindset. The fixed mindset believes that intelligence is static. We already know that you don't come with that as an overarching mindset because you're in a learning environment. That means you believe in the possibility of learning and growing and becoming more intelligent over time. So what we want you to do is to check your operating system to make sure it's set up for you to build on and has the capacity to load up all of what you want to do. And so I want you to answer this question. What change would you make if you could change your mindset right now? What's one thing you would change right now? And you know you just need to shift your mindset to make that happen. What would you change? I'm anxious to hear what you think you would want to change. I always think I would change the ways I communicate with my professor, with my other peers in my classroom. Those are always some things that students want to change. What would you change? Think about it. And be mindset conscious. 
always be thinking about the mindset that you're applying to the learning environment. You have to be mindset conscious because no two people see things the same way. So take a look. If you're in class, you're working on a team project, you're going to have some challenges because somebody else is going to see things from a different perspective. They can't see what you see and you can't see what they see. You're going to need to have a very strong learner's mindset to navigate this space, to understand that you need to go to the other side and step into their shoe to be able to see it from their side. This is really a challenge in learning, particularly because we do a lot of group work, a lot of teamwork, and we have to work with others. You have to be able to see from the other person's side, because no matter how hard they try, they can't see it from your perspective until both of you think about stepping into each other's shoes, going on the other side so you can see what's there. So that's one thing we want to make sure you're paying attention to as we navigate your mindset. It's really about making sure you know what perspective you take in what situation, that you don't have a fixed mindset. Your mindset is always shifting based on the needs of the situation. When you're in difficult situations, you're going to need a different mindset. In some situations, you're going to need an innovative mindset. In some situations, you're going to need a conflict resolution mindset. In some situations, you're going to need an empathetic mindset. You have to think about what mindset does this situation call upon, and you will have that mindset to support your learning. Some days you're going to feel like it's not all going great. You're going to need that encouraging mindset to encourage yourself. You're going to need that uh, mindset to be proactive, to reach out and connect with other people. You're going to need that mindset of humility to ask for extra help when you need it. And to know that asking for help is totally okay. That's what we do in the learning environment. Learning environments are constructed for us to support each other's learning and become better because we have each other. So that's part of the mindset that you need is what kind of support do I need? Where is that support? I'm going to go forward and find it. The college has so many supports. You want to make sure you're not just here picking out the F's that you are actually diving in and having a more fulsome experience. So I want to give you a few tips to go through. To switch from fixed mindsets to growth mindsets. Number one, don't plan excuses. Take the time that you're using to plan the excuse to get something done. If you're running late on an assignment, rather than stopping to think about how carefully you can construct the email to send for one hour, take that hour and work on the paper. You never get any rewards for excuses. You only get rewards when you get things done. Switch your mindset. Spend it in the time, in the space of doing. Number two. Don't get derailed by challenges. Part of a learner's mindset is knowing that there are going to be challenges. You will experience challenges in this learning journey. The learner who has that positive, proactive mindset plans for those challenges. So you would be thinking right now, I need to connect with someone. So in case I miss something, in case I need someone to talk to, in case I need to know where to go, I'm going to make some connections. I'm going to make sure I browse the website so that I know. I'm going to complete my orientation and make sure that I'm well set up. You're going to plan for challenges because they're going to come. Challenges are a part of every journey, including your learning journey. That has to be part of your mindset. So challenges don't shock you or derail you. And number three, don't justify lack of results. This is a growth mindset. The growth mindset understands that greater results are achieved by greater effort. And so when you look at your results, your results are the outputs that reflect the inputs. What you put in is what you're getting out. And if you are putting in and it's not translating, there is something wrong with the process. So we're going to get help with the process, but we're not going to justify this and settle for that. We're going to always be thinking about how can we adjust the process? How can we adjust the level of effort? What do I need to do? What am I missing to be able to get the results that I came here for? 
And that's why you need your goals. You need to know why you're here, what the results that you want for yourself look like. And so you be able to measure the amount of effort that's required to get those results. And when you don't get those results, to go back and look at what am I doing that's not it lined up for me to get the results I want. What am I doing and what do I need to be doing? What are the things that I'm not doing? And keep scrutinizing your process. Just take your process and treat it like an experiment that's under the microscope that I'm just looking at it and making sure it's working for me because that's what you have control over. The results are coming from somebody else. But what we have found is that the people who work very hard on their process, who make sure that every day they're putting into the process what's required, they're the ones who get the results that they're looking for. Number four, don't take feedback personally. Anyone who gives you feedback cares about your results. They want you to know that there's something wrong with the process, the way you do things, what you're doing, Right. And so make sure when someone gives you feedback, dig deep within the feedback for the germ of good in it, the piece that you can learn from. Sometimes people give us feedback and they're not experts at giving feedback. So they give it to us. Maybe they package it the wrong way. They say it in the wrong place. They say it in the wrong tone. They give it to us on a day when we are not ready for it. However, feedback is fundamental to you moving forward. Feedback is your friend. So take feedback and use it to positively move you forward. Even if at the moment that you receive it, it throws you off, gather yourself and take the feedback. Take a look at it, scrutinize it and see what's in this feedback that I can use to improve my process because I am someone that I am really a scientist working on my own process because that's how I'm going to get the results that I want. And number five. Don't fear change. Embrace it. We all have COVID. COVID is the real great change management strategy of all time because we've all had to learn to change, to be agile, to pivot, to frame and to reframe. And you're here in the midst of a pandemic. That means this is something that you've already embraced. So congratulations. Continue to apply that to your work. Continue to apply that to building your mindset. As I said before, the fact that you're here means that you already have a learner's mindset. So please build on it by being more purposeful, making sure you know your goals. Every time you join a webinar, every time you join a class, make sure you know why you're on it. Make sure you know what you want to get when it's done. Every time you join a group to study, know what you're getting out of it. Always know, know your goal. Take control of the learning process. You own this process. You are the owner. You're the leader. You are the one who's setting the goals, creating the process, determining everything here. And you're the one that's putting in all of the manpower, all of the labor. You're the one that's putting in everything that's required. You have to own it. And lastly, do the work. Setting a goal is aspirational. It's great. It's lovely. It's where you're going. But if you don't do the work, you're not going to get there. So setting the goal is like identifying the point where the race ends. But you've got to run the race. You've got to run the race. That's an important aspect of the learner's mindset. Mindset is just the starting point. You've got to go and do the work. And so let action get you the results. So take a screenshot of this slide. And when you leave this session, take 10 minutes, record your top three learning goals for this semester. Find a partner to share your goals with and plan to meet up with that partner every week to discuss your goals. What the research suggests is that people who meet weekly to discuss their goals are 65% more likely to achieve their goals. But if you really want to achieve your goals, meet with the person every week based on what you had planned and map that process together 
and you will have 95% chance of achieving your goals. So here we go. Write down your goals, share it, track it weekly with a partner. 95% chance you will achieve your goal if you do that. So what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to put up this slide, which is a summary of what I call the learner's dozen. And I want you to take a shot of that. And on those days when you're not feeling like your mindset is where it needs to be, grab this and just have a look at it about how we need to be intentional and not be on autopilot, as we've demonstrated that we all are, how we won't shortchange ourselves, how we'll be fully engaged. We're going to put in the effort and go the extra mile. We're going to explore more by reading. We're going to follow instructions precisely, seeking clarification when necessary. And we're going to focus on the process, not just an answer. We're going to put in all the effort. We're not going to make excuses. And we're going to treat feedback very positively. In fact, we are going to be proactive and seek out feedback. We're going to ask for it. We're going to embrace change. And we won't let challenges derail us because we're going to plan for them. And we're going to seek support when we need it. Alvin Toffler says, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but it will be those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. You are here to learn. Part of the learner's mindset is not just about learning. There is a lot of unlearning that we have to do, a lot of relearning that we have to do. Part of your mindset is to think all the time about what do I need to be learning, unlearning, and relearning. All right, so tell me, did you achieve your goals for our session? Tell me what's the most important thing you're going to take away from the session today. Message me in the chat box. All right. All right, Jamina, Guillermo, Larissa. Yes, you guys have achieved your goals. What are you taking away? What is your most important takeaway? Oh, the learner's dozen, Jamina is going to take away. Really like that learner's dozen. Okay, the learner's dozen is popular. Very good. Keep your learner's dozen. That's important because we forget things very easily, and sometimes when we need it the most is when we forget it. Keep it handy. Daniel likes the growth mindset. Excellent. Taking ownership of your learning. Very good. And I'm going to encourage you, never forget that throughout your journey at George Brown. And if by chance you forget it, remember, you have a very strong team that's here to support you. Their teams inside the classroom, your faculty in the academic areas, and you have your entire student success division to support you. The learners doesn't and being accountable for results. Very good. Very good. So I just have two minutes to take questions, take any questions from you. And while you're posting any questions, any comments you have for me, I'm going to put up here how you can reach us. Follow the college on Instagram at GB College. Screenshot, print out, and pin the board. Very good, Jamina. <laughs> She's done all of those things already. Fantastic. I want to say thank you very much. It's always my pleasure to work with you. And I really like having the opportunity to talk to you about your mindset at the beginning. Because sometimes when we start out with the right mindset, we really position ourselves to have the most optimal outcomes. I want to again say thank you and welcome to George Brown College.